जी बिस्मिल्लाहमान रहीम मुनी साहब कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन ऑन गेटिंग दिस बुके ऑफ फैंटेस्टिक स्पीकर you know from dedan general durani i also see henry tillman and my close friend hussain askri also present and uh, some of our colleagues from academia business circle so uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, we have spoken a lot about uh, geopolitics and uh, uh, ms kedan also reflected on digital economy and also how digital rmb would uh, would impact uh, i would like to be a little bit candid in what our expectations should be as as somebody who's living in a region which is which is transforming and it's transforming fast uh ladies and gentlemen we are living in interesting times we are living in a times where technology and communication is actually uh reflecting on how we behave and how we build narratives we are living in a time when uh, taking 800 million people out of poverty is also questioned we are living in a time where regional connectivity for peace stability trade and economics are questioned and it is only because sometimes geopolitics overtakes geoeconomics but i think in a country where today the population is over 220 million and it's fast growing at a rate of 2.5 and by 2050 expected to be around 245 million and in iran where now uh, the if my statistics uh, uh, are correct then uh, around 92 million and by 2030 or 2035 this also growing by at a rate of around 2% today in pakistan we have 1.3 million people entering the job market and as firing for looking at opportunities which can only occur through regional connectivity through industrialization through foreign direct investment and since i deal with investment and trade i would only be speaking about uh, about it and i do not care how uh, geopolitics uh, reflect as the, as we have policies which can make us rich and which can pro provide opportunities to our next generation ladies and gentlemen we are also living in a time when we have 1.6 beds over 1000 people and in iran it is perhaps a little more or little better so if we can synergize uh, our policies uh, and as 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 since munir sahab has mentioned me as an expert of cpac today we have 22 projects worth 28 billion being uh, being executed in energy in infrastructure in optical fiber and socio economic development i think this is a fantastic model which other countries can em emulate and i was in both the belt and road forums in 2017 and 19 and the best part was that there in both the forums pakistan was just this is a good case study and i think if iran can look at this uh, this model they can also perhaps connect to connect the dots and bring in post policies and uh, procedures for seamless trade and interconnectivity ladies and gentlemen in this time and in this crucial time when both iran and pakistan are at economic crossroad and looking for opportunities i think belt and road initiative provides us the beacon of hope where from people to people connectivity from seamless trade from uh, uh, from introducing new technologies like we have done recently we have introduced joint working group on science and technology and joint working group on agriculture and the challenges and the inflation that both the countries uh, are facing today because of um, uh, economic uh, challenges and also because of environmental challenges and this i i think can cannot ask for a better opportunity where china iran pakistan and rest of the bri countries can work together and you know forge and forge a partnership which can bring prosperity in each of our country ladies and gentlemen i was fortunate to be working on the gwadar master plan and also had a had a in depth study on uh, chabahar and also hamban tuta 
And I would like to share one example here, and it's it's uh, it's uh, it's on the lighter side. When when I was doing this study, I was surprised to see that in Hamban Tuta, Pakistanis have written about thirty percent more on this uh, Sri Lankan port than even the Sri Lankans. So sometimes we get into discussions which actually do not reflect on what the real state on ground is. I think there is a commonality uh, between uh, Chabahar and Gawadar. And if we can look, especially in the maritime uh, blue economy, uh, I think these two ports can supplement each other. We can have religious tourism, we can have uh, economic growth, and both these ports can actually develop faster than uh, faster than what most of most of the others are expecting. We developed our road infrastructure, and in next phase, we are also developing our rail infrastructure. And the way that rail infrastructure is being developed in Afghanistan, or at least being talked about for development in Afghanistan in the next 10 years, the way rail infrastructure is being developed in Pakistan with its connectivity with our Western border in, through Zaidan, I, I think this, this could be a great uh, rail silk road besides the uh, maritime silk road, which is just adjacent to this, uh, this rail network. So, so with this rail network and also the maritime Silk Road, I think Iran and Pakistan can leverage from their geostrategic position because of economic reasons. We can enhance trade, not just between our two countries, but also regionally and globally. We can actually uh, talk and uh, you know, stamp our positions as, uh, as pivotal role in the Belt and Road It's important thing that we should learn right now, both Iran and Pakistan, is the, mod the poverty alleviation model of China and the way that they have taken so many people out of poverty. I think Pakistan and Iran can learn from that and even the rest of the world can learn from that and not talk too much and, and perhaps bring in the socioeconomic development. Ladies and gentlemen, through China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, we are connecting less developed area of our country with urban centers. And this connectivity would ensure the socioeconomic development that we all hope for and our next generation is hoping for. We are looking in the next phase in industrial development, industrial cooperation uh, in, in, in nine economic zones. And if we can have economic zones and the free trade zone at Gawadar and with that connected to the economic zone in Iran, in Oman and also in United Arab Emirates. I think this, this chain of special economic zone can create uh, an island of, uh, of industry, industries which can supplement each other and create the uh, supply chain, which we all are expecting, and I, I think lever uh, anything, I think mitigate some of the risks that we are expecting. Lastly, ladies and gentlemen, I think that, and I believe that geoeconomics, industrialization, jobs, and economic growth can mitigate some of the risks that we are talking about. I think the U.S. Uh, U.S. China trade war. Uh, and also COVID would give some reasons of relocation of industries from, from Asia. And perhaps this is a great opportunity for, for us to take advantage and create enabling environment, which can create the pull factor for those industries to come. We are also expecting Chinese industry and connecting to the Chinese uh, supply chain. And perhaps the digital RMB would support that process. If that's and we can perhaps in 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 special economic zones like Rashakai in Dhabiji in Sindh and also in Punjab, if we can introduce this as a as a case study and from there expand uh, its uh, its connectivity with the with the other economic zones and uh, areas, I think that this has a great promise. So lastly, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I think any regional uh, regional economic uh, initiative supports the region 
it supports economic activity and economic activity is always helpful and i think uh, uh, the distance of thousand of mile is taken by first step so iran and china has taken their first step we had taken our steps earlier we have an advantage of five years and i think in five in these five years pakistan has demonstrated that we are a country which can absorb and actually attract uh, investment worth around 30 billion in just three years because the initial two years were about policy formulation and understanding. So we can supplement each other and I congratulate my colleagues in, in Iran and in China for, for, uh, for, for, for this initiative. And I think in very near future, this uh, China-Pakistan economic corridor, Iran-China, and also rest of the corridors within the belt and all the six corridors within the belt and road initiative would be connected i i think when we talk when we talk of india uh, not participation we should also look at the model of aiib because because some of the countries which are not actually supporting bri are are, are trying to take economic advantages through the asian infrastructure bank where india is also a partner so I think we should not look at the general media narrative, but look at the facts on ground and how countries are looking at it as an economic activity and economic possibility. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Hassan Daud Bhatsap.